First of all, um, he was the father of the nation, the man who brought uh, Papua New Guinea to independence in 1975. Um, he will be remembered for uniting a country that's known to have a thousand tribes with their own tradition, customs, and, and their own belief system um, in the 1960s and 70s before independence. Uh, he will be remembered in the Pacific region as well uh, for his work, uh, especially when speaking on behalf of other smaller countries uh, in the region when, when it came to regional forums. In relation to Australia's strong ties with PNG, he, he should be remembered for giving PNG uh, independence from Australian colonial rule, uh, where there was a, a lot of discontent uh, at the time over, over systematic uh, racism and, and, and su suppression. But also after those difficult years and after independence, Sir Michael also tried to maintain good relationships um, uh, with Australian uh, prime ministers. In, in the 49 years he, he was in politics, 17 of those years uh, he was uh, prime minister, uh, but he, he was also foreign affairs minister. Uh, and, and that also helped uh, Australia and PNG uh, and its people enjoy that close uh, tie that, um, that, that that both both countries have. Uh, it was because of uh, leaders like Sir Michael. Uh, but most importantly, he believed deeply in, in the Westminster system of government and all of its functions, but he held um, close his Melanesian uh, traditions, uh, which was of value to him, especially uh, making decisions with consensus with all other leaders around him uh, and the people. Well, his decades in PNG were not without controversy. What were some of his most challenging times? Some of his most uh, challenging times were, was um, during the 2011 uh, constitutional crisis. It happened when uh, he was away seeking medical treatment uh, in Singapore uh, for five months. He came back and he was disqualified uh, from, from parliament uh, and replaced uh, by Peter O'Neill, who became the country's new prime minister. Uh, Sir Michael was able to get support from the courts that reinstated him, uh, but then he was uh, he was shouted out of Parliament when he tried to re-enter with uh, other members of Parliament who were loyal to him. But at the time, uh, Peter O'Neill had the numbers, so he was able to hold on to power. Other controversies uh, were uh, the Julian Motti uh, affair, which happened uh, a while back. And also there has been controversies of uh, mismanagement, corruption that led to uh, a leadership tribunal, which he was able to uh, defeat. And Bethany, the loss is probably felt most greatly in East Sipic. What did this province mean to Sir Michael? Well, Sir Michael Samara is, is from the East Sipic province, um, and that's the that's his local province that elected him into parliament for the 49 years that he spent in parliament. Um, and after receiving the news, a lot of residents crowded uh, in front of his home. And they were after details of when the, the funeral service will be held. And what funeral arrangements have been made? Prime Minister James Marape has announced uh, two weeks of mourning starting uh, on the 1st of March um, and then there'll be another uh, public holiday on the 12th of March. Uh, they are still in uh, talks with the ECP provincial government uh, and, and the family uh, to see where they will hold, uh, you know, the funeral uh, arrangements. Uh, but it's expected that uh, Sir Michael Samara's state funeral will be held in Port Moresby. Uh, former prime ministers uh, are meant to be buried at uh, Independence Hill, but the family have said that they would like his uh, body to be laid to rest in the East Sipic province. What is the atmosphere like in the capital and what has the reaction been on social media? It's a very sad day in Port Moresby. A lot of residents uh, I've spoken to feel uh, a very deep, Feel, feel very deep sorrow. Uh, many have said that they've shed uh, tears in private. Um, it, it's difficult to explain the impact uh, Sir Michael uh, has had on a country like Papua New Guinea. Uh, he, he was regarded as the father of the nation. Um, the whole country respected him. Uh, 
they were vehicles on the streets um, painted with mud, uh, RIP uh, Grand Chief Sir Michael. Uh, so a lot of people are mourning uh, in their own way. Without the founding father of modern day PNG, how will the country move forward? He was uh, the glue that united uh, 800 different uh, people together to get independence. And he still played a very pivotal role uh, in, in modern PNG politics when there were votes of no confidence or any other issues that uh, involved stability in government. So while he has left, he, he has left um, and passed on, uh, there is still Sir Julius Chan, who is another founding father who is still alive. Um, and Sir Michael's legacy itself uh, is a reminder to the Papua New Guinean people uh, that it, would be, it, it will be important uh, to, uni to, to always stand uh, united despite uh, the differences in, in provincial uh, affiliations or tribes or customs or traditions. Bethany Harriman, thank you so much. Thank you.